thank you so much for having me here. It's a pleasure to be at this conference and it's a pleasure to visit uh, South Korea. So thanks for that. My name is uh, Yuan Morten Mortensen and I'm the CEO of Packbridge. And I'm here today to talk about uh, eco-friendly packaging uh, trends and technologies from the paper industry. But I have also included some others outside the paper industry. So this is me. And I work here at Packbridge and we are an industrial network. And connected to us we have over tw 200 companies who work within the value chain of packaging. So we are not just one material supplier or one type of converter in our network. We have the whole value chain. Because we believe that if we don't have discussions within the value chain, we will not develop the innovations of the future. Uh, we work for innovation and we work for internationalization, helping companies with export and also collaboration across borders. And this means across different industries also. So not just within the packaging industry, but connecting knowledge that is outside the packaging industry to the packaging industry. And uh, we are founded on a triple helix uh, thinking. So we have academia, public sector, and business within our network. We do not work with research, so we're not a research institute like the other uh, two speakers, but we focus more on innovation and collaboration. So this is what I'm going to talk about today, where we stand today, the drivers determining the future demand, and some examples on eco-friendly packaging innovation. So first of all, why packaging? Why do we need packaging? There's many reasons for why we need packaging, and I think a lot of people within the, within the food and, and packaging uh, value chain don't understand the real benefits with using packaging and thinking of packaging much earlier in their development phases. Because we need it as a physical protector, we need it to work against uh, as a barrier, we need it to give information to the consumers on what's in the product and also why you should buy it from a marketing point of view. And security, of course the product has to be safe, that's the main thing a packaging should do, should, should do is to make sure that the product inside is safe. And also it should work within logistics and it should be convenient when it comes to opening and closing and so on. But the most important thing with packaging is that it should save more than it costs, both from a sustainable view and also from a financial view. And a lot of companies focus a lot on the financial point of view, but we need to focus more on the sustainable point of view because it's our earth and we have just one earth. Uh, here are some uh, global challenges for the packaging industry. We have increasing trade, uh, mo new multi-channel uh, delivery systems. We have e-commerce coming in, taking over a lot of the purchasing, power, uh, purchasing decisions from the consumers. We have food and the food waste in the supply chain and at home. In Sweden, we throw away every third baggage of food that we bring home just because we look at the package or because we don't smell anymore. There's a scarcity of raw materials. We need to find new ways to develop materials based on other type of uh, 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 raw materials. Um, there's a lot of different here. Fewer people living together is another thing. We uh, tend to be more single uh, households. Uh, we want, as, you, as we heard before, her fewer ad artificial ad additives in our products. We have to work with obesity. We eat too much and too uh, poor. And we also have an aging population. This will demand more different uh, aspects when it comes to packaging. Easier to open and close, but also the information needed to, to go to the people who are, who are older. This is how 74% of Swedish population thinks when they think about packaging. They see it as garbage. And that's something we within the packaging industry have been very poor to communicate. Since so many people see this as garbage, they don't really understand the benefit of packaging. There's a lot of these comp uh, stores developing in Europe. I don't know how it will work, but there's a trend going for uh, um, food stores without any packaging. And this is and somehow driven by cons consumer demands that they want no packaging because they think packaging is good. But uh, there is something we have to look on when it comes from the packaging industry. Why is there such a need? And how can we work towards making a, an understanding that packaging is, is better than it is? 
This is uh, old uh, research. It's been around for a couple of years, but we, they asked packaging, the packaging impact on the environment and asked consumers versus packaging experts. And this is what the consumer says. They say glass is the best, then paper, aluminium, metal, and so on. And when you ask the packaging experts, it's the totally other way around. So here's a mismatch <coughs> in what the consumer thinks is the best for the environment <coughs> and what we as uh, packaging experts knows. So that was just some background. And then we have this. More plastic than fish in the sea by the year 2050 in weight if we continue to do as we do. And this is what people see. <coughs> so this are, that was just some over, overview of packaging. This is more some trends determining the future of packaging demand. Sorry, I have to take some water. So these are three, three different areas I've focused on today. The demography, lifestyle, and sustainability. If we start with demography, we have <coughs> these different areas that are, that are um, sorry, I got something in my throat. Maybe it's the sweets I bought. <laughs> um, age, urbanization, and single households. These are the main sectors that are, that are affecting demography right now. <coughs> if we look at the age paradigm, this is five years ago, this is now, <coughs> and this is the future. So we're going from a population that has more people that are uh, older than younger. We're, we're producing not enough kids, but this also has to change in, in when it comes to packaging and how we have to work with packaging. Because we, have, <coughs> we will have a bigger age distribution and a lot of more um, older people, we have to look on how do we work with easy handling? How do we make uh, the packaging more readable? And here you can connect a lot, I think, to the dig digital uh, possibilities when it comes to using mobile phones or other technologies in order to inform products, <coughs> uh, uh, consumer what's in the product. Smaller portions, because we'll be more single households, and the demand for smart and intelligent packaging. We have the urbanization. This will have a great uh, uh, effect on distribution. How will we distribute food, food and products into cities in the future uh, if we want to de decrease the use of cars, but we, we will have more people and, uh, living within the cities? Handling of used packaging. How will we make sure that we recycle and make use of all the packaging that we bring in to the cities in the future? <coughs> what's, our, what's the thinking here? Smaller sizes, consumers, they want to, ch to choose much more. They want to have smaller sizes, want to have different types of products for everything. We cannot just uh, provide them with a family pack anymore. We need to have different types of packaging solutions. And there's also an increased interest in convenient solutions that makes it easier for the consumers to use the packaging and, make, and uh, use the product inside. This is uh, a little bit single households, how it... How it uh, how it looks, but this is a prediction that in 2020 we will have nearly, in the US, US we'll have nearly 40% people single households. We're going from big families and uh, uh, that way of uh, living to being single much longer. And this also puts a demand on, on the products out there. There'll also be an increased uh, demand for uh, premium products or products that offer a convenience that you would like to, to buy, uh, to, per, to, um, um, to have a higher price on. Lifestyle is another area. Here convenience, food waste and spending power are the, are the, the focused areas. Convenience. This is a strong driver for packaging demand. And this is this is the main things here. Open and close. Is it easy to open and close? Can I reuse the packaging? Can I make sure that it uh, lasts longer if it has a special uh, functionality? Is it easy to pour and dose? Can I carry it around? A lot of people eat on the go right now. Storing convenient places. Flatten and dispose when I've used it. 
smart and intelligent packaging. Here we see in, in Sweden and in the network that I represent a lot of new IDs uh, developing, connecting to, to the digitalization, but also when it comes to bacteria and also censoring and so on. There has recently been a huge investment in Sweden uh, on, on just smart and printed electronics. It's called Acreu, where they focus a lot on developing the printing, uh, possibility, uh, the printing uh, possibilities of packaging and in including sensors and so on directly in the, the circuits. And here you see two, fam two famous people eating on the go, and they're not the only one. There's a lot of people who want to eat on the go, and you see machines everywhere. This is a company, uh, I don't know if you've heard about it, but called Thin Films from uh, Norway. And they have developed a way to use uh, packaging and labels and NFC technology to, to connect, to, to bridge information between the packaging and the phone by just tapping on the packaging. So <clears throat> if you have a, a phone with an NFC yeah, possibility in it, you can just tap on the product and it will give you information. You don't need any QR code or anything like that. And this opens up a totally new way to communicate and inform the consumers about how you can, what's in the product, where has it been, uh, is, has it been transported okay, is the material that's been used in the product organic or not. It gives you direct contact. And what it also does is that <clears throat> before you can only understand if they bought it on one shop online or if they bought it uh, at the shop, uh, a regular shop, now you can see, okay, they bought it in that shop, when do they use the product? And then you can create marketing that is connected directly to the situation when you use the product. And you've never been able to do that before. And this is, can only be done through the packaging. <coughs> food waste. 20 to 25 of the consumer's food waste is uh, related to packaging. And that is poor packaging. And that is because in this situation we've had uh, the decision to use a cheaper packaging solution maybe than you should and this has affected the food, the food waste. And here you can use packaging in many different ways when it comes to size, the ceiling, storage, lightweight and so on to, to make sure that the packaging, the, the, the food waste is, um, will, will not uh, happen. And here the packaging can be part of the solution of, to the food waste. You can work with different uh, portion packs, you can work with resealability, easy emptying, modify the atmosphere con uh, control that we talked about before, different types of barrier materials, oxygen scavengers and so on, but I think the future will be a lot here. We need to have much more active and smart packaging and include the knowledge that we have within other industry when it comes to sensoring and bacteria and chemistry and so on directly into the packaging solution and in the material. Sustainability. It's been on the word forever, on every, everyone's lips now forever, for 20 years. I think we need to find a new word for sustainability because it's starting to, to don't have an effect anymore. But in Sweden we, we talk a lot about uh, CSR, and that companies have to work with the CNR mindset in order to make sure that everything they produce can be replaced and so on. And sustain, within sustainability, we have three different. Uh, we'll talk about three different aspects. I will not go into much to inclusive design, but inclusive design means that you understand how the product is going to be used in the different situations and make sure that the, the packaging is, is uh, working for that situation. This could be, for for example, with people who have a problem uh, with their fingers or with their sight and so on. But uh, you use that, and since a lot of people will be older. The coming years, this will be an, a, an interesting target group, and if you have packaging that can help that, then you can probably um, have a better sales possibility. So, what is then an environmentally friendly packaging? Is it to use a specific material, like carbon or glass or cardboard or so on? Or is it to think about how the packaging affects through the whole life cycle? We think that from, our, from how we work with packaging and how our uh, members work with packaging is that you have to have a life cycle approach on your packaging solution. You cannot just uh, say that you're environmentally friendly by using just one type of material. You have, oh, sorry. You have to make sure that uh, it's included in the manufacturing of the paper, 
uh, the packaging, but also the, the food and so on, and also how it works through the value chain when it comes to transport, and finally, how it's been recycled, because it's, that is the most important part. If you produce something that is, cannot be recycled, then it's not environmentally friendly. There's a lot of uh, focus now on uh, new materials. Nanomaterials is one, and biopolymers is another one. I will not go in, in detail to this, I'm not the expert in it, but when it comes to nanomaterials, there's been a lot of focus now on how to, to rearrange the structure of uh, different types of uh, material, but also how to use uh, antimicrobial uh, uh, particles to kill germs and so on, higher barriers to include different types of layers within the packaging uh, material that you have right now. There's a big investment in Sweden right now called Max 4, that works a lot with uh, nanoparticles and also spallation, where you can go very deep into the material and, and, and change the structure in order to have a different type of uh, high, bar high barrier properties. Also, when it comes to strengthening the materials, you can have more lightweight material, but has the same strength that the material has right now. And also coming to uh, the bi biodegradable part, uh, that make sure that the the material can be biodegradable or recycled in the processes that we have right now. Biopolymers has risen a lot in Sweden. The discussion around biopolymer has, has been quite, uh, has advanced a lot the recent years. And here are some examples how different companies work with biopolymers. You have, for example, here Heinz with the plant bottle, the same with Coca-Cola. This is a, a juice company in Sweden who has a, uh, bio bioplastic uh, material, and it has it because the product that that is uh, the juice that it's do uh, that is making is also 100% organic. So they want to have the same feeling in the packaging. Uh, a lot of companies are starting now to also promote in their own marketing that they're using e eco packaging, that they're using uh, uh, environmentally friendly packaging. It's a selling point for them, but it's also something that, that they have connected so far into their sustainability strategies. Uh, in Sweden, I don't know really how it is here in South Korea, but uh, it's increasing the, it's really, really increasing the demand for ecological products and organic products. And its uh, price is really not an, an object right now. It's more that the more eco we can get, the better. So. Right now, the most, the most uh, interesting thing is how to make sure that we have raw material for all of these biopolymers, because that's something we don't have right now. We only have a couple of suppliers in the world who can, promote, uh, uh, who can provide raw materials for, um, for biopolymers, and there needs to be different uh, uh, material sources for this. So food packaging, so material trends, better barriers, that's what you're uh, focusing on a lot. Lower weight, sustainability, of course, but also to uh, reusability, to make sure that you can reuse the packaging again, and, uh, either, either as packaging or as other type of products. Nanomaterials, a lot of focus here on how can we work with this to strengthen the packaging and to make sure that uh, also that it has uh, different types of barrier properties. Smart and intelligent packaging, also other different types of categories, and also the, the most Another interesting area is the printability. We see a lot of uh, investments now when it comes to digital printing. A lot of companies are installing digital printers, and here it's not just the printing that becomes better, but here you can also work with smaller volumes. That's uh, also a problem for a lot of smaller companies that they cannot provide and, and have uh, packaging solutions for smaller volumes. And here you can do this with digital printing. Okay, so here's... Um, I'll end up with some slides on the different types of eco-friendly packaging innovations that we have seen the last coming years. And uh, the first one is uh, this one, for example, from Tetra Pak, that is uh, fully renewable. It's made of fully renewable material, so it's sugarcane in the cap, and then it's paperboard, and the barrier is also made of sugarcane. So this is one solution that has been out now for a year or one and a half. Some uh, companies in, uh, in one company in Finland, one company in Sweden has been uh, started to use this packaging uh, for milk and juice. 
Södra is the company also based in Sweden. They have uh, been working on a material called Durapulp, this here. And it's a biocomposite that uh, is so fully biodegradable and it's, you use it, you, you form press, I don't know, you, you press the material together to create different types of shapes. This is a free form pack. So this is the first uh, packaging solution of paper that you can, uh, that you can uh, make structures on by using uh, the, the material called uh, fiber form paper here. So this is the whole machine concept, concept that you buy and in that you get uh, a, a, pa a fully paper-based packaging solution that you can uh, make structures on by, by pressing and then embossing the packaging. It's a solution, it's a, a collaboration between uh, Billerud Korsnas here and Kurti and um, a guy who drives freeform packaging. Very interesting for dried, dried products or for candies and so on. This is the uh, first sealed paper based, uh, first sealed paper packaging. So it's a dust tight, dust tight packaging solution for flour or, or that type of products. So if you have a, a packaging uh, product right now where that's in plastic, you can now use this packaging in paper uh, with the same uh, uh, possibilities. This is uh, a little bit uh, to hit against the the blister packs that you probably all have been uh, working on, uh, trying to open. Do you know what the blister pack is? It's this packaging solution with plastic that you cannot open. There have been a lot of companies now wanting different types of solutions for this. So, oh sorry. So here is the so blister pack in, uh, in card, cardboard only. Have you heard about iFood bag? Anyone here heard about iFood bag? No? This is, has been a secret. This guy here, a researcher in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, has been working secretly with this uh, project now for five years. And he tried to get a lot of companies involved, but as usually the large company says, if we don't understand what it is, or if you don't give us half of the, the, the possibility, the, the, the ID, then we cannot help you. So he, he, he did it himself. He got a lot of money from the Swedish innovation uh, system. And he developed a bag made out of paper that can hold food cold for 24 hours. I don't know how he's doing it, but it's working. He has sold a lot of these bags to food uh, companies that deliver food at home, but also has uh, recently uh, made a, a great deal in Africa when it comes to transporting food. And the thing is that this bag here, it has a, it, it has a, it's made out of paper and it has a seal up here. And when it's closed, you add, uh, you just, it keeps the food cold for 24 hours. So it's a breakthrough when it comes to uh, this product, the problem with, with uh, delivering food home uh, to, uh, to consumers. So write down iFood bag if you work within the food industry and delivery of food at home. It's quite interesting. And this is the biggest chain in Sweden right now delivering food, food home, mat.se. Uh, this is a, a research um, institute called Invencia. They work a lot with fiber-based packaging solution. And uh, this here is an expandable bowl. So they try to test different ways of offering convenience. So here you can see here when you pour water, it opens. So it, you can deliver something in a, with a smaller volume and then when you add water, it opens up and then you can have an interesting um, meal experience. They are, their events are focusing a lot on fiber development and how you can use the forest for different uh, types of uh, areas than just uh, 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 paper or cardboard. This is another one where they've been looking on self-collapsion packaging. So when you eat the product, it makes the packaging smaller all the time. So it reduces uh, the places, uh, uh, shelf space and so on. And uh, this is uh, 
something that was released uh, last week at our conference that we have in Sweden. Have you heard about the Carlsberg uh, Green Fiber Bottle? Anyone? No? Or are you not? You don't like to raise your hand, maybe. Uh, this is a project that's been going on together with Carlsberg, Eco Expac, and uh, yeah, innovation uh, funding agencies. And they have uh, come quite far with developing a biodegradable, bio-based uh, packaging for carbo uh, uh, carbo uh, carbonized uh, um, products. So they're looking on next year to launch this type of innovation to their consumers. And their greatest uh, uh, um, worry is not is, is not uh, that it will work. The greatest for is will a consumer accept drinking a beer from a paper bottle? So that's uh, and the interesting approach that they have had uh, from if you look at different types of um, ways to work with product development is that instead of holding this a secret when they have developed it, they when they started three years ago went out and said we want to make the first fiber, uh, green fiber bottle in the world for, for this type of, for beer, and we need your help. So they have used a lot of open innovation models in order to develop this process quicker. I think it's quite interesting. I, th I, would, I would drink of it. Would you drink in this type of beer? Not Casper, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, this is another approach. This is a company called UPM Raflatak. This is not at all a product, but this is a, a solution that they have uh, developed for, uh, for, their, for their customers. And it's a way to go in and measure how the different types of um, labels and packaging that they use are affecting the environment. And if you would like to change and use different types of, uh, of uh, material and so on, it will give you exactly how it will affect the uh, the environment uh, based on energy and water consumption and C CO2. And this is uh, just uh, showing that a lot of companies, they want to have this image of sustainability and so on, but they're also trying to make the extra effort to try to explain how can you make the, mest, the most environmentally friendly decision when it comes to packaging. And they're not just including their own type of uh, material and labels, they're also including a lot of other actors' material that's on the market. <laughs> Uh, this is Scanfil. I know when uh, we presented here, uh, to, I think two or three years ago at Food Police, we, sh we talked about this company called Scanfil, and this is not paper-based. So now I'm going from paper-based to to other types of material, but I still think it's eco-friendly. And they have used uh, they use uh, um, poly uh, non-oil-based polymers from uh, Brascam in uh, Brazil. And then they use natural cork, chalk here, and then they combine that to create these type, this type of packaging here. So it's a fully 100% environmentally friendly packaging with uh, non-oil based polymers and minerals. And this is the same type of thinking that the company called Ecoline, I don't know if you heard about them, are uh, using in their products, but here they are they're uh, still struggling with finding the 100% eco um, bio-based po uh, polymers. But these are two other ways of looking on eco and, and, and more environmentally friendly packaging. This is a small company in uh, Sweden that is uh, called Gaia. They have been uh, working a lot with uh, finding other, as a re making renewable materials based on other raw materials than just uh, um, sugarcane and so on. They've been working a lot with potato and uh, rapeseed and uh, they have sugarcane also and then they have this uh, chalk. And they have come up with a, 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 a product called Biodolimer that is a high quality mineral filled biomaterial. And the interesting thing on how their, uh, their innovation was developed was that the, the public sector, the, the medical uh, the people that uh, were responsible for buying all the medical products uh, within the public sector, they wanted to change their aprons from uh, oil-based aprons to non-oil-based aprons. You know these you have when you 
to protect yourself aprons. And they went to this company and said, can you do this for us? And they worked with that project for one year and now they developed uh, this type of material. So uh, it's interesting to see how a public authority can go in and, and help spur, spur innovation because they have, a, they have a lot of money and they have also a lot of possibility to test within their, their systems. So this is a new material that I think will be quite interesting in the future. And here you have um, paper cups communicating with your phone. And this is based on QR codes, but the QR codes are embedded within the, the print. So here you can, yeah, you can use this, uh, this here with your phone and get the information on what's, what's, about, what's this company you're working with or what's in the coffee or can I get some special offers and so on. Innocence uh, is a startup that, uh, w that was uh, um, founded two years ago based on that we from Packbridge made a competition where we asked our community on uh, how you can use packaging to determine if food is good or bad. And uh, they, a guy came up from, um, their, um, from a, a scientist from Lund University who was working a lot with Nano. He said, I have an ID to man manipulate the ink in a way that it measures the bacteria in the food. And then I can connect this, this, um, this uh, yeah, w the, w I can connect it to a sensor, a digital sensor, and tell you if the food is bad or good. And this could be done with, for different types of meat products. So they're focusing on meat products. And I've right now uh, come quite far with making this label. So this is a printed label that you use on the packaging where the ink uh, measures how the food uh, is doing and then tells, uh, gives the signal to the, to the to person buying it if it's good or bad. And the approach here is to prolong the shelf life for the retailers. That's the most interesting thing for them, to make sure that you can sell the product a little bit longer. So that's where they see the, the benefit. I'm not expert in it, but if you want more information about how, how it works or contacts to them, um, I'll of course, uh, help you with that. And then the uh, last slide here, you have s probably seen this here in, in Korea also, but this is uh, a way of preparing food, and it's, called, uh, it's a company called Mikvak. And how they do it is that they prepare the food in the, in the um, uh, production facility by cooking it and pasteurizing it in, in the, the packaging. And then this means that all the vitamins and everything will, be, will stay in the product. And so when the consumer takes it home and uses it in the microwave, it, uh, don't, you don't need to set any time. You can just put it in and set five minutes. And then when they hear a beep from this valve, it will sound like this. <whistles> then uh, it will tell you that the food is done. And the interesting thing with this is, is not just a this thing is that the material, all the minerals and all the vitamins are in the packaging and in the product. So you don't miss anything. So that was my last slide and I just would like to end with this slide. For two weeks ago we had a, we had a big conference in Sweden where we lift up the latest uh, innovations uh, within packaging and so on from Europe. We had Marks and Spencer and Carlsberg and Tesco and other people, uh, companies uh, explaining what they do, but we also invite startups, because we think if the packaging industry wants new ideas and new, new solutions for the future, we have to integrate with other types of uh, industries and also the startup community. So if you would like to, if, you're, if you have your way through Sweden and you would like to learn the latest packaging innovations from our side, then September is a good month to visit. So, thank you very much. <웃음> 네, 바로 이어서 질의응답 시간 갖도록 하겠습니다. 또 친환경 패키지에 대해서 이렇게 발표를 해주셨는데요. 네, 질문 있으신 분은 손을 들어주시면 되겠습니다. 네, 마이크 부탁드리겠습니다. 네, 안녕하십니까. 빙그레에서 온 김기철이라고 합니다. 어, 제가 여쭤보고 싶은 거는 그동안 이 세계적으로 플라스틱 포장 산업이 발전해 왔고서 
지금 이제 낮은 단가로 대량 생산을 할수 있는데 친환경, 포, 친환경 포장이 아무리 좋다고 해도 이제 지금까지 발전해온 플라스틱 포장에 비하면 단가가 비쌀 텐데 그러면 은 제품의 단가가 올라가게 되고 그럼 시장에서 도태될 수 있다고 생각을 하는데 그럼 이런 쪽에 대해서는 어떻게 해결 방안이 있는지 좀 궁금합니다. Um, thank you for your question. It's a very good question. Um, I think it, this is a little bit... Uh, um, of, of course, we need to expand the raw material base of eco-friendly uh, material, but I think it's also something as consumers and companies to make sure that we make responsible decisions. If we want to have a, a world where we have eco-friendly packaging in the future, we have to take a little bit on, of that burden on our own shoulders and make sure that we maybe pay one a little bit more for some type of solutions. But I know in business that that's not the, the model. But I think uh, more and more consumers will have uh, the, the, the say in this that they would like to have more eco-friendly solutions and, uh, and products. And uh, if that market grows, then I think the companies will go there and then maybe the raw materials, uh, raw materials will, be, will, will be there also. So I think it's on our all, all our sh shoulders to make sure that we go for an eco-friendly environment. Yeah. 네, 감사합니다. 또 다음 질문 받도록 하겠습니다. 네, 앞쪽 마이크 부탁드립니다. <웃음> 네, 좋은 발표 고맙습니다. 저기 그 우리나라가 지금 그, 이, 그 적용을 하려고 그러는데요. 어, 한국에서는 테트라팩 때문에 그 스웨덴을 굉장히 잘 알고 있습니다. 어, 지금 그 식품 제조 회사들이 지금 이제 판매를 했잖아요. 그럴 때그 포장지를 회수해야 할 그런 의무를 주려고 그러거든요. 근데 스웨덴에서는 그런 그 법적 제도가 있는 건지 그런 거 하나 하고 그 다음에 아까 나노 센서를 좀 이용하는 것. 그래서 구체적인 아까 그 저기 고기를 얘기를 했는데 그 외에 다른 예가 있으면 좀 얘기를 해 주시죠. 음, the first question I'm not 100% sure, but I, I think that it, that is the companies that, that produces the products they need to make sure that there is a plan for how to to recycle the material that they use. So in Sweden it's like that, I think. It's called a producer liability in Sweden. Um, the second one, if there's a nano, nano if I understand the question uh, correctly, is if there's nano packaging solutions for other areas than meat. Yeah? Uh, I, we have, no, we have only seen the possibility to, to do it on meat for now uh, within our network. But I can go back and check to see if there's other ones working within uh, different types of areas and come back with that information too. 네, 감사합니다. You know, you question, like, first question, uh, you didn't answer the properly. Uh, 저기, the, it's a compulsory regulation. That if you produce certain, uh, certain products, the, so the, if you produce a certain products, uh, the manufacturer should cover the, some activity to correct their package because it's a pollution of the environmental pollution. So this is some uh, compulsory regulation in the world in the future. So do you have such a movement in your country? I, I, don't, I really don't know. I have to check that. I haven't, I'm not the expert in that area. <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in our country, mm -hmm. it's now going to, going to push, it, push the manufacturer to correct their uh, the empty yeah. package. Because in, in Sweden what we have is that we have a, a recycling thinking and we have organizations that, that are making sure that everything produced in Sweden can be recycled and somehow. So when it comes to to glass, we have a 96% recycling um, of all the material that we produce in Sweden. And when it comes to cardboard, we have around 80.
but then when it comes to plastics, we have around 40%. So there is a thinking, I don't know exactly the law around it and who's responsible, but there are those type of movements, and it's for a Sweden consumer, it's very important to be able to recycle nearly everything you buy. And the state has gone in and, uh, and supported different types of uh, uh, littering bins that you have in your homes in order to make it even easier to recycle products and so on. But I have, I have to come back to you with who has the exact responsibility and so on. But there is a movement and there is a quite a long thinking in Sweden when it comes to recycling yourself. 네, 감사합니다. 좀 강제적인 그 패키징 재활용에 관해서 또 스웨덴의 케이스에 대해서 말씀을 해 주셨는데요. 여러분도 추후 더 질문이 있으신 경우에는 또 직접 말씀을 여쭤보시면 어, 또 답변을 해 주실 수 있도록 하겠습니다. 여러분 더 질문이 그러면 없으신 것을 알고 여러분 다시 한번큰 박수.